Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, look at that. I thought that that was Roman, but I think it's probably northwest frontier of India. A lance head, a good throwing lance. Not terribly sharp now, but probably was then. But when you have a long, heavy staff behind it, oh look, there are little bits of the the, the dirty wood right at the, uh, still up the shaft. Looks pretty insa unsanitary, I must admit. Uh, again, this very much Indian fighting sword. You'll note these, uh, these, these funny sharp points here. This indicates probably that it was a sword and the handle, the pommel's gone there. The handle has been, uh, the, 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 this, this sword can only be drawn when you're intending to draw blood. So if you draw it to clean it or anything like that, you prick yourself there just so that the blood is drawn. Swords are very sacred creatures in some cultures. I suppose they always have been. I mean, you think of Excalibur and, uh, and you think of those extraordinary uh, Viking swords, all with names and things like that. It was very interesting because some years ago, uh, a, a man in America who had a had some pieces of a, 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 a Viking sword made by one of the great legendary sword makers of the Viking period, but it had broken. It was in a number of pieces. And he took it into the museum uh, to authenticate that it was made by him. And what they discovered was that the real unbroken Viking swords were made from steel that was mined in Afghanistan or the Far East, Far, far Middle East, somewhere like that. And that had properties that made it less brittle and, and, and strong and enduring. But this famous sword maker uh, had imitators. Everybody wanted one of those swords like that. So if you're a smart blacksmith, you think, I can do this and put his name on it, put his markings on it. And they made them. And you got it, given it, you know, a great value. This is the M1A1 carbine, lads. Uh, and you took it into battle and you swung it. And then it encountered something really hard and it fragmented. End of story. Interesting to know that there, there have always been fakes. I remember once, I, ah, talking about Egyptian things, I had the privilege of doing a voiceover for a, a museum in Memphis, Tennessee. And, um, and it was a great exhibition of uh, Egyptian and Roman art, or Romano-Egyptian art, uh, that was put together by a wonderful, um, a, a wonderful uh, museum cu uh, curator in northern upstate New York, who put this together. And we were going to a a press conference, and there was a delightful old man who had been uh, head keeper of the, of, of, of I, I think, Egyptian and Roman sculpture in, at the British Museum. A delightful, retired old chap. And we're going there to do this press conference. And um, I know what's going to happen. You know, they're going to talk about, you know, my work as the possibly the second most famous archaeologist in the world, because I, I worked with the most famous archaeologist in the world, one, um, uh, one Indiana Jones. I mean, let's face it, you are listening to a man who helped find the Ark of the Covenant uh, and the Grail Cup. Anyway, we're going to this press conference, and I know that people are going to be asking me questions, and I am also smart enough to know that the answers that I give are trivial, are nonsense, are of really no value. They should be asking the experts, the two people who really have done it, 
dedicated a lifetime to knowing about their subject. So I tried to prepare them for this. And I said, look, I, I, I just want you to know that at this press conference, they will be asking me questions, uh, and, and, and they shouldn't be asking me questions. They will be treating me with the, with the equal respect that they, they, they should treat you, which is false. I'm just an actor. Um, so I want you to know that no matter what happens, I know where the real authentic thing is, you. And the little old keeper uh, of, of Greek and Egyptian antiquities at the, uh, uh, at the British Museum said, oh, that's all right, John. In our line of business, we're accustomed to working with fakes. <laughs> <laughs>